Today we will make a link aggregation between an Aruba switch and a FortiGate firewall and we will test the connectivity in the end. Let's dive right in! Have you tried turning it off and on again? Alright, so here at my desk I have a Aruba 6000 switch and a FortiGate, I think it's a 60E, yeah that's correct. And we will make a link aggregation between these two devices. Here are the cables that we'll be using. One kind of USB cable, the Aruba has USB-C and this goes to my laptop. And the other interface to use, I will make a connection to the web GUI on the Fortinet with this Ethernet cable. And then we are going to use two Ethernet cables to set up the lag. And to clear things up, lag is the term of aggregating multiple interfaces. LACP is the protocol being used. And if you see 802.3 AD in this guide, it's the IEEE standard. All right, so I hook up the USB cable to my laptop. And here in the device manager, we can see that COM3 is being assigned. Let's jump to my laptop so we can see a bit better and now we will configure the Aruba switch so we're going to open up putty and here we will go with COM3 as in the device manager and 115 200 is the speed for this switch make sure CRL is selected and hit OK the default login is admin the password is blank and I think this is pretty much a factory reset switch. I haven't done any extra config on this. But to make sure, let's do show running config. And here we can see, yeah, this is pretty much a vanilla config. Just one VLAN, VLAN 1, connected as access ports on all the interfaces. And we have also an IP on the interface VLAN 1 that is via DHCP. So we're going to change that also. We want a static IP on VLAN 1. So let's change that. Let's head into the config terminal. We type config and then we will set a static IP on VLAN 1. So we type interface VLAN 1, enter. And then IP address and we will go with 192.168.10.2. I want this switch to be dot two and the forty gate, which is the firewall and the default gateway probably to be dot one and a dash twenty four. So this is a small C class network. Then we type exit. So now we have a static IP on VLAN 1. Next, let's create the lag. It's actually a separate interface in Aruba. So we do interface lag 1. And new interfaces are shut down by default. So we are going to type no shutdown. Then we will have VLAN trunk for this lag and it's gonna be native for VLAN 1 because that's the only VLAN we have right now so don't make it complicated and LACP mode it's gonna be active and we hit enter all right so that's actually it for creating the lag on the Aruba switch so we exit out of the interface creation all right, so we have the lag. Now it's time to bundle it to actual physical interfaces. So let's do it on 13 and 14, which are Ethernet interfaces on the 6000. So then we type interface 1-1-13 and 1-1-14. So we can make it on these two interfaces at, one, at once. And here we just type lag1, easy as that. And we can exit out of the interfaces now. 
We can type no shutdown, but these interfaces are actually already no shutdown. And of course, don't forget to save the configuration with write mem or short br mem. Okay, so now we can actually show the config that we have right now. See that everything is all right. We have VLAN 1, we have the lag created that is going to have VLAN 1 that can traverse over it. And of course you can have other VLANs on, uh, on this lag, but we have only VLAN 1 right now. And here we can see for interface 1 and 13 the lag is the one that is configured on those interfaces. Here we actually get the comment uh, that the DHCP is ignored when static IP is configured. So yeah, but let's remove that. It's not good practice to have DHCP and static on one interface. So we do that by typing interface VLAN 1 and no IP. DHCP. So if you type no before syntax, you are going to disable it and exit. And we can see if we type show running again that the uh, interface for VLAN 1 has no IP DHCP. So we have a static IP address on VLAN 1 that is 192.168.10.2 exactly as we want it and let's save this configuration let's head out of the laptop and now it's time to configure this one the 60e and let's use the ethernet cable and the web gui for this one it's actually quite easy in the fortunate it has a very good web gui and uh, by that we can also use multiple interfaces on my laptop at once so, we plug in the Ethernet cable. The default address for the FortiGate is 192.168.1.99. So, we are going to set my PC to IPv4 192.168.1.99. And for example, one, two, three, doesn't matter that much, the last numbers. The subnet mask is of course important. A dash 24 is the same as 255.255.255.0. And we don't need any gateways or DNS because we are going to be on the same LAN. We are not gonna switch. So in a web browser, we type 192.168. Dot one dot ninety nine to log in to the FortiGate. Can take a bit of a time. I'm pretty sure it should redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Let's double check that we are on the same LAN and we are. It can be a bit wonky like this. Let's try HTTPS and see if it that works better. So yeah. Okay, here we can proceed. So we hit advanced and continue. And let's log in to the FortiGate. And the default is admin and blank if you have a factory reset. And this is a completely factory reset, FortiGate. So we type a new password for it here. Hit OK. And we log in with a new password. All right, so here we have a bit of a wizard. We hit begin. We can migrate and config from old equipment. I'm not going to do that. And we can also enable automatic updates, but usually not maybe a good idea. You might want to read the release notes first. And here is just the dashboard, doesn't matter that much. Optimal or if comprehensive if you want more views. Hit OK here. 
This is the welcome screen and we can hit don't show again. All right, so we are now logged in to the GUI of the FortiGate. And this is the status dashboard for this FortiGate. Here we can see some system information, licenses, etc. and the administrator accounts, but we are going to network and we are going to hit up interfaces. And here are some standard interfaces already. And remember, we have our config cable in port 3, but I, I want to use port 6 and 7 for the lag. By default, they are members of the hardware switch. So we are going to click in here and remove them from this hardware switch. So now this so now it's only switching 1 to 5 and we will use 6 to 7. We can minimize the rest and let's focus on creating a new interface. The 802.3 AD is for 40 link, so we can ignore that one. But here we create a new interface. We can call it whatever, it doesn't matter that much. I would call it uh, lag Aruba. Alias is not necessary and we are going to use the standard 802.3 AD aggregate so that is the same. It can maybe in other brands say lag or LACP and interface members is going to be port 6 and 7 and for address we are going to keep it at manual and this will be on address 192.168.10 and I want this to be on .1. And in FortiGate you don't type dash 24, here we're going to fill out the complete subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And yeah, it can create the address object if we want to refer to it later on, that's no problem. We will also for administrative access uh, use ping so we can test the connectivity on this lag so let's check ping and the rest uh, we can actually keep on default and just make sure it's enabled on the bottom then we can press ok so yeah, there we have it, the Forte link we can ignore, but here we can see lag Aruba, there is our interface IP and port 6 and 7. That's actually it, well let's jump out of the PC and actually hook up some cables. So lag is kind of good if you want some extra bandwidth. These are one gigabit interfaces, so the lag should go up to two gigabit when we connect it. And also, uh, of course, a bit of redundancy. If one cable jumps out or if something happens to it, we can um, be sure to still have connectivity between these devices because we have two cables. Here we can see the link light lights up on the Aruba, both for 13 and 14. Let's check the same thing for the Fortinet. Yep, we got link on port 6 and 7, so the cable should be okay. And um, yeah, now it's actually time to test the connectivity. We don't need to make any more configs, it should be up and running and all good. So it's uh, yeah, we can do it on the Aruba switch, so let's head into the Aruba switch. We are still connected with the USB cable. And here we can do the command show lag1, which is the name of the lag we did. And here we can actually see the speed, 2 gigabit, and it's up and running. So that's perfect. You can also do show lag brief, you just have um, yeah, more brief info like this. Here you can see status, the speed, the trunk, and uh, that it's actually up and running. Now let's ping the interface on the FortiGate. That is not the right IP, so I will probably realize that soon. We have the IP of 
10.1. Yeah, let's do 10.1 here instead. And repetitions, 999. We can have it just ping for a very, very long time. So we see we have perfect ping between these devices. The lag is actually okay. And if we pull out one cable, it's uh, magic, it works. Maybe it's what's actually using the other cable for the ping. This works also. So yeah, here we can see the lag is really, really good for when you have some connection issues in the cables or the interfaces. And if we put it back, the ping still goes from the Aruba switch to the Forte gate. And of course, if we pull out both cables, the network is, yeah, the ping doesn't go through. And if we put in one cable, it should go up very soon, the ping. Here it is. So it took about, yeah, three, four seconds. And uh, yeah, let's put back the last cable also. And this cable was just for managing the Fortinet on the web GUI. So here we can see, of course, the ping is still going. All right, so that was it for creating a lag, both in Aruba, AOS, CX, and 40 gates. Bye bye.